I'm Dana Crosby. I'm an ENT at Southern Illinois University School of Medicine. So I treat all areas of ENT, but I do have a special interest in disorders of the sinuses and skull base. Um, and I completed a fellowship in that area at the University of Pennsylvania. I see many patients with chronic sinusitis and treat that either medically or surgically. Um, also, I see a lot of patients with tumors of the sinuses and nasal passages. Those are also typically treated using endoscopes or other instruments that work through the nose. I also work very closely with the neurosurgeons in approaching tumors that rest on the skull base um, and approach those through the nose endoscopically as well. There are actually a lot of studies out there that show that quality of life in patients with chronic sinusitis is actually worse than quality of life in patients with congestive heart failure. And so it really makes these people incredibly miserable. Um, you know, you just feel tired all of the time, you feel kind of foggy, you just feel like you can't function, you have a lot of facial pressure, constant drainage. It really, really impacts quality of life. There are just tons of quality of life studies on sinusitis patients because they're just miserable. The main symptoms are facial pressure, um, typically in your teeth or over your cheeks and your forehead. And then in general, you just, it just makes you feel generally fatigued and, and miserable. Um, you can have kind of acute flare-ups where you have fevers and things, things worsen. And most people that you end up treating have had these symptoms for years. Because endoscopic sinus surgery is, is so new, it really only began at all in the early 80s and has changed um, dramatically over time in the way the instrumentation you use, the imaging, the video that you use, the video quality that you get and can see allows us to do so much more than could be done 20 or 30 years ago. So patients that were treated 20, 30 years ago, you know, had stuff done that we would never do today, so they still kind of suffer because of just not knowing how to treat the disease initially. And I think also the treatment has shifted from, you know, we're surgeons, we want to fix everything surgically. So, but the truth is chronic sinusitis is actually a medical disease and it often requires surgery but does not always. And it's important to try medical therapy first, kind of exhaust that option before you go in and alter somebody's anatomy because the best thing for somebody is to leave things how they're meant to be. Part of what I do is really aggressive medical management and if they fail that, then I would go forward with surgical management. Initially we thought we need to preserve, preserve mucosa but actually um, the tide has kind of changed and now we're thinking we need to open the sinuses up and make larger openings um, in the sinuses and the, the point of that is to actually allow topical treatment to occur. So we have different kinds of medications, different um, anti-inflammatories and different antibiotics that we can add to the sinus rinse that we have patients uh, apply to their nose multiple times a day. So that actually changes the rate of revision surgery dr dramatically. So from prior to using those topical irrigations, patients with nasal polyps, for instance, would be having revision surgery about every three years. With adding a topical steroid to that nasal irrigation, you can uh, prolong the average time to revision surgery to about eight years. It makes quite a difference in focusing on kind of the medical component as opposed to just saying, oh, if we just open up these holes, it's going to drain correctly.